Hi there, Mark here again, and today I'm going to be doing a quick little review between these two entry-level rear-wheel drive buggies from Tamiya, the DTO2 here and the DTO3. Now I'm going to go through the similarities between these buggies because they do share many parts as we'll see as we go along. Uh, I'll go over the differences between the two, look at the advantages and disadvantages of the different chassis, uh, look at some of the problem areas that I've found, and at the end I'll go over some little hints and tips on uh, how you could possibly improve them. So first let's take a quick look at them running and then we'll get the bodies off and have a look at these chassis. Okay, so as you can see that they do both run very well indeed. I must say that they are both slightly hopped up and they've both got hotter motors in than the stock motors, but we'll talk about that later. So first off, you can see straight away, the main difference between the DTO2 and the DTO3 is the chassis. Um, your DTO2's got your more familiar styled bathtub style chassis. So it's flat on the bottom and it's basically a tray, um, an open tub. Um, where all the electronics and the battery sits in the middle. And the DCO3 is much more unusual because uh, you could call it a bathtub I suppose but uh, it's two pieces of plastic that are kind of joined down the middle so they kind of bolt together one from each side and it's a much narrower chassis and much taller than your normal bathtub but I've got to say um, this one is really rigid this chassis it doesn't move at all that's not saying that the DTO2 chassis is a bit flimsy because it's not. It is a, a rather solid construction and very strong, but I think that the DTO3 chassis is that little bit stronger. And as you can see, apart from the difference being the, the width of the chassis, the um, DTO3 is actually quite a little bit longer. It's about actually an inch longer or 25 centimeters. And that has a big impact on the handling characteristics of these two chassis. So at the time of making this video, there aren't really that many versions of these kits available. On the DTO2, uh, you can get the Sand Viper, which is this one, and you can also get the Holiday Buggy. There were a lot more versions, but those are the only two available now. And as for the DTO3, uh, there's this one, the Racing Fighter, and you can also get the Neo Fighter. Now, I think most of these are about the same price. They're around about 100, 110 pounds-ish, minus electronics. So they're very similarly priced, apart from the Holiday Buggy, which is more of an entry-level kit um, with a smaller motor. And it's about 20 pounds cheaper than the Sand Viper, but there are quite a few differences between the two. I'll just show you quickly. This is the Holiday Buggy. Just move the DTO3 out of the way. And the main difference has been that the cheaper holiday buggy, as I said, it's got um, 380 motor standard, so it's a much smaller motor. It comes with friction shocks as standard, whereas the Sand Viper's got oil shocks. The Sand Viper's got adjustable top wishbones or top arms, whereas you can see the solid plastic ones on the holiday buggy, which are non-adjustable. And the Sand Viper also comes fully equipped with ball bearings and it's got metal drive shafts and metal output cups. So those are the main differences. And I think to be honest with you, uh, value for money, uh, the Sand Viper gets it because of those extras you get with it for say about £20 extra. But the Holiday Buggy is still a great starting point. I wouldn't want to put you off that. It's a great car to go for, especially for a beginner as I said, and you can always hop it up later. And back to these two then. So let's have a look at the similarities. And that's basically the suspension front and rear is exactly the same. And also the transmission and gearbox is the same. So you might be able to see that these lower arms at the front, those lower arms and the upper arms that come standard on the Holiday Buggy and on the DTO3 are these plastic top arms. So these are the front top arms. Um, you see I've, I've replaced mine with turnbuckles. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And these are the ones for the back. And as I say, they're exactly the same on the Holiday Buggy, but they are upgraded two turnbuckles on the Sand Viper as I said earlier. It might be a bit easy to see if I turn them upside down if you can just compare so you can see that those wishbones or A-arms are exactly the same. If we have a quick look you can see the motor casings there, uh, the housings for the gearbox are exactly the same. We've got different motors in but uh, those are the same components for those gearboxes and the gears inside are exactly the same. 
Now I have upgraded the shocks on this DTO2 but as stock it comes with the same shocks, the Tamiya CVAs, as the DTO3 so again those are exactly the same. So apart from the chassis themselves the only other real difference are the shock towers front and rear and that's this plastic part here on the DTO2 as you can see that holds the top of the shocks hence the name shock tower and this kind of Y shaped plastic part here is the rear shock tower and that, those are different to the DTO3. Now I've upgraded this to the uh, carbon fiber upgrade but as standard this is the, uh, the plastic version that comes with it and although I've upgraded mine a friend of mine has got completely stock DTO3 with this component and it's never broken so those are quite strong and again there's a different piece holding the back there so the shock tower at the back is uh, a more a flatter or less of a Y-shaped plastic construction and again uh, that's never broken on this it's a few years old now and those are very strong so I can vouch for those much better shock towers than the ones on the TTO2 now here's an example of that DTO2 rear shock tower uh, and I've got to say it's made of very very brittle plastic and I've had quite a few of these break now the front shock tower is more likely to break than the rear one although that is easy to break but this is much more likely to be broken uh, and that's because you can see it sticks up and there's there's no kind of strengthening it's just a, a straight piece of plastic uh, without any real support um, there is a fix for that you can see a bit of aluminium here we'll talk about that later when we look at the upgrades but yes yeah, so one of the big advantages for me of the racing fighter or the DTO3 over the DTO2 are these shock towers. Um, they're much stronger and uh, will withstand impacts. The DTO2 shock towers just won't. But a good plus point for both of these cars are the gearboxes that they share. The gearboxes, the transmission, the differential gears are all pretty bulletproof. I've never had a problem with any of my DTO2 or DTO3 gearboxes. And I know I have seen on YouTube, I've seen people running kind of down to four turn brushless motors, crazy power, and they're running the stock gearboxes and the stock gears apart from one thing which is the pinion gear. Now the pinion gear that's supplied with all DTO2s and DTO3s is I think it's a 17 tooth aluminium pinion that's basically made of butter, obviously not really but it really doesn't last very long at all especially if you do hop up your motor. Um, so I strongly recommend the Tamiya hop up a 17 or a 19 tooth pinion uh, made of steel uh, for about four or five pounds uh, if I can find out the link I'll put uh, I'll put the part number in the description so what are they like to drive well guys in my opinion I know they're entry level and they're relatively cheap for a Tamiya but I've got to say they're fantastic <laughs> if you haven't tried one all I can say is give one a go either one I'm sure you will love it uh, being rear wheel drive they're a lot faster in with the stock motor than say a four wheel drive, the entry level Tamiya four wheel drive to compare it to would be the TTO2B, a little bit more expensive. But with a similar motor in, um, the two wheel drive or the rear wheel drive will always be a lot faster because there's less transmission loss through that central prop shaft and through uh, turning the power through from spinning down the central shaft through 90 degrees to turn the wheels. Um, it all loses power. With these, the engine and the gears and the wheels all turn the same way there's no converting that drive from a central position through 90 degrees and losing power so you do get a lot more power down to the wheels from that motor so they are very fast um, they're not as easy to control obviously because you've not got any drive to the front wheels but having said that it's a hell of a lot of fun um, they're hard, harder to drive than four-wheel drive but when you get used to it as I say I think it's really rewarding to get flicking them into turns and uh, controlling that kind of rear wheel drift that you get so yeah I couldn't recommend them enough um, go out and get one but the differences between the two um, they, they do drive very very similarly but obviously with a longer wheelbase the DTO3 is that bit more stable especially in a straight line um, but having said that the DTO2 being shorter um, steers in quicker than the longer DTO3 so it's horses for courses really wouldn't really recommend one over the other in terms of handling I like both of them so there you go. 
Okay, so a quick look at the tyres that come on these kits. So the DTO3 comes with the uh, Tamiya Square spikes on the back, which I really like. And it comes with these narrow rib tyres on the front, which again, I really do like. And the DTO2 also comes with the same rear spikes. Uh, these are different, I've changed these out, but, but it do, they do come with the same tyres on the rear. But on the front, this is what comes as stock on the Sand Viper. It's not a Sand Viper wheel, but uh, there you go. This is uh, a wider kind of flattish tread. Uh, there's no real kind of edges to this at all. And I would call that an on-road tire, to be honest with you. And I really don't like those for off-road driving. They offer virtually no grip whatsoever. As I said, they'd be fine for on-road, but these are buggies and they're really not designed to be run on-road. And if you do run them on-road or on tarmac or on concrete, you will trash those rear tires in no time whatsoever. So I don't recommend running these on the road unless you swap the tires out. So I upgraded these straight away. Now you can fit the wheels from the racing fighter or from the DTO2 holiday buggy. They'll fit straight on um, the Sand Viper and they work really well. But what I did, I upgraded these Fast Tracks Turf Ripper tires. I'm not sure if these are still available, but these are really sharp spikes and they work great on grass and off road and on dirt. So that's what I've done to my Sand Viper. As you can see, the holiday buggy comes again with those thin rib tires, which again, they're very sharp ribs and they dig into the ground, into the soft ground, into the grass, and they work really well. So I do like those. And the holiday buggy comes with different, they're kind of wider block uh, spike tires on the back. Again, they work really well. I do prefer the square spikes, but these do work quite nicely off-road as well. Staying on advantages and disadvantages, as I said earlier, the uh, Sand Viper comes with these adjustable tie rods for the top arms to replace the standard plastic ones that you get with the holiday buggy. And that allows you to adjust on the front and the rear um, the camber of the wheels. So that's basically how much they tilt in or tilt out. And I really do prefer to run my buggies with a bit of negative camber, which is where the wheels are tipped in at the top and out at the bottom. Um, basically, um, that improves the grip on the corner because when the, the buggy leans into a turn, that wheel will still be square to the ground. So that allows you to adjust that to your preferences. It does change the way the car handles quite dramatically when you adjust those angles. Now, DTO3, as I said, comes with these fixed top arms. But as you see, I've got a simple fix for that. You can buy the Tamiya turnbuckle set, which gives you those adjustable arms. Uh, as you can see there at the back and the top for the front and rear suspension but I've made mine simply from some ball ends and a piece of M3 threaded bar and I think it cost me I don't know about six or seven pounds for the whole car um, which isn't too bad you can buy the turnbuckle kit but I think that is about 20 pounds for that now I'm just going to talk about the problem areas for these cars and luckily there aren't many of them, um, I'm glad to report. They are pretty good all round I've got to say. As I said the, the main issue for me with the DTO2 are the shock towers but with the holiday buggy because the body fits over the top of the top of the shock towers they are quite protected and it's uh, not so much of a chance that you're going to break one on a holiday buggy but definitely with these being open to the elements on the Sun Viper these are fair game to getting broken quite easily. What I've done to protect the front shock tower, as you can see, is I've made an aluminium plate. It was a, a flat piece of plate which I've cut out and bent there, kind of just through 90 degrees. And there's a gap between the shock tower and the plate itself, and it gives that kind of triangulation. And since I've made that plate, I haven't broken, I shouldn't have said that, should I? <laughs> Until now, I haven't broken um, a single shock tower since I've been fitting these braces and I think this one has been on the car for I don't know, tons and tons of runs and, and certainly many many crashes and it's still in one piece. I've also um, made these little alloy brackets you can see that are fitted to the sh top of the uh, shock tower and that just widens the stance of the tower and allows the shocks to sit more upright. Um, that works really well. I think I've copied that from the Tamiya Hop-Up, which is a carbon part. Um, this, so it's a similar shaped plate made out of carbon. So I just copied that with aluminium and that works a treat as well. Uh, there is one thing that really annoys me about quite a few Tamiyas and it's present on both of these cars. And I'll show you what it is. 
it's these things. Tamiya call them screw pins and I hate these things. Um, why do I hate them? It's because basically they're made of like real awful quality mild steel. They're very very soft and they bend. You've only got to kind of look at a tree when you're driving the car uh, and these things will bend. I've bent many of them. Um, if you give the front end a knock this pin goes through. It's the pivot for the suspension arm there and that will bend and you'll soon know if you've bent one because your suspension will just stick and it doesn't move and I've done that many many times and the other thing is they rust up so easily again they can corrode quite quickly if you're running a bit of damp weather if you don't uh, regularly take them out and clean them and give them a bit of an oil or a bit of WD-40 or something like that they'll rust up and again your suspension just seizes up uh, as I said it's present on both the cars not quite as bad on the DTO3 because the DTO3 has got uh, a better solution for fixing the front end which is uh, a u-shaped pin uh, that's a much stronger piece of steel and it's coated so it doesn't corrode so i quite like that because it's also part of a, 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 a more clever solution for the front suspension where that pin pivots inside that gray plastic piece and if you can see and you can probably see it underneath there and that is a separate place that's underneath this little bumper that's held on so if you, you have any damage and break that part of the suspension you don't have to replace the whole chassis or the whole shock tower at the front it's just basically a matter of replacing that one small plastic part so I do really like that. So onto the motors the DTO2 Sand Viper comes with a silver can um, and the DTO3 Racing Fighter comes with a torque tune motor so that's an advantage straight away this will give you probably two or three mile per hour more top speed and it's got more punch out of the corners so that's a good starting point and an advantage over the sand viper both of these chassis are capable of handling a lot more power and as you can see in this one I've put Tamiya TBLM that's a 15.5 turn that runs really nicely with the stock ESC but I didn't notice that much of an improvement in speed until I put the 19 tooth pinion on. So if you're going to put that motor on, I definitely recommend the 19 tooth pinion. And that's a sweet match for this chassis. And in the racing fighter, I've gone for another censored motor. It's a 13.5 turn, no named. And again, that worked fine with the Tamiya TBLE 02S ESC that came with the kit. So definitely, if you want a bit more performance, I'd go for a, a mildish brushless is fast enough in my opinion there's no point going crazy uh, the faster you go the faster you end up hitting something and the faster you end up crashing and the more parts you're going to break especially like I said with the DTO2 on those shock towers so I think I've covered most things there if there's anything else you want to know drop me a comment and I'll try and answer your question in the comments as I said at the beginning regardless of which one you go for you can go for both if you can because they are both great buggies they're great fun the handling is fantastic especially once you get used to the rear wheel drive if you're not used to it before they do handle differently but not that differently as i said the racing fighter is a bit more stable and the dto2 or sand viper uh, turns in a little bit quicker but is less stable in my opinion the DTO3 is a slightly better design though overall, it is stronger and as like I said the fact that you can change out the parts separately on the front suspension is another plus point. But you will need to buy ball bearings for this because it only comes with those plastic bushings. So there you go, take your pick and uh, go out and enjoy it. hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching very much and I hope to see you soon. Bye.